I'm going to be talking about Cleveland, Ohio, and Mexico City, and comparing and contrasting how they are with sustainability. So there are three ways on how to evaluate sustainability. One is looking at the environment and how they handle natural resources and try to prevent pollution. Two is looking at equity, so the standard of living for people, equal access to education and opportunities, and the economy, how the economy is able to grow and make a profit. All three also overlap, such as having equity and economy to result in workers' rights, for instance. I'm going to evaluate how Mexico City and Cleveland, Ohio are similar and different with how they handle sustainability in their city. So to be in Mexico City, there are a few negatives, beginning with equity. According to the International Community Foundation, ICFDN, there is gender inequality in Mexico. The article states that girls drop out of school more than boys by the age of 12. The reason why they drop out of school is because of the ingrained gender roles. Girls are sometimes unable to go to school because they have to stay home and do housework. In the same article, it also states that in Latin America, marriage with children is increasing. So when girls get married, 83% of them end up leaving school. The reason why this is not good for the equity in Mexico City is because if women are not getting an education, then girls do not have something to look up to. So the positives, they are working to fix themselves. The mayor of Mexico City is trying to reverse the gender inequality that exists there. According to an article by Hernandez, in 2019, the mayor said she wanted to help women's economic independence. So Mayor Scheinbaum took the first step in closing the gap of gender inequality by putting in $200 million to create cooperatives and small businesses. This would help girls to have a strong role model to strive to be like and realize that they can have a career, even though it's normally dominated by men. So this shows how equality and economy are intertwined to the axis of education. The economy. According to an article by Martin Prosperity, they have a score of a B plus because they're in the top half of the economies for doing business. They are also are placed 40th for getting credit and 46th for protecting their investors, according to the paper, which ranks them against 183 other economies. The article also states that they are advancing in technology as well as research and development. So, the environment. According to Martin Prosperity, under the category of sustainability and green economy, it got a score of an A-. There are a few problems environmentally in Mexico that they're working to fix. They're striving to reduce emissions so that they can lessen the air pollution problem and also try to change logistics to try and combat it. Looking over the list, it is shocking to see how much they have done, such as saving 13,600 hectare acres of environmentally sensitive property, banning free plastic bags at grocery stores, and using biodegradable substances for packaging and raising water tariffs. The public transit system also has the same grade. They have a subway system which runs throughout Mexico City during most of the daytime, and they have a rapid bus system which is a primary source of public transportation. The article also states that the buses have reduced the carbon dioxide emissions by 35,000 tons. People are also able to rent a bike for about two hours as long as they have a driver's license or passport, and they can also rent a bike for cheap if they need it for longer. The usage of bikes is encouraged by closing the roads to traffic except for people biking or skating on every Sunday morning. A program called Echo Bikey was created to help bicyclists be safe while riding and to make bicycles a better source of transportation in the future. The one downside is that the roads that they have are not in great condition, so it can make it pretty dangerous. Now to Cleveland, Ohio. The city that redefined itself economically is now a good city to look at. Looking at the education in Cleveland, it appears that they are trying to make it easier for everyone to get. They have the Say Yes to Education scholarship for college. One difference with Mexico and the United States is how many years children attend school. Looking at the education in Cleveland, it appears that they are trying to make it easier for everyone to get a Say Yes to Education scholarship for college. One difference with Mexico and the United States is in how many years children attend school. Mexico has children dropping out of school at the young age of 12. While well, in the United States, it is required that people go to school until they are at least 16 in most states, although some require the age to be 17 or even 18, according to Cosi Bunker. According to the website for the Say Yes initiative, the purpose is to not only increase education levels of the people in the city, but also to keep the people in the city. This is boosting the equity and economy because by doing this, they're helping to keep the educated people of the city employed thereafter. With regards to the economy, 34.6% of people in Cleveland are living in poverty. 
according to the census government. The number of households that have a subscription to broadband internet is 65.8%, which fits into the category of economy and equity. While in contrast, in an article by Reuters, it states that in Mexico City, many more people went under the poverty line between 2012 and 2014, bringing their poverty rate up to 46.2%. It fits into the economy category because it shows just how many people cannot afford to have that in a society where it is basically a necessity. It is also a necessity for equity, especially for students. We are able to realize that more than ever now with the pandemic and people having to do schooling over the internet, so people who do not have access will be set back. Another category mentioned by the United States Census was how many men, women, minority, and non-minority owned firms there are, which can be also reflected on the equity in the city. It shows that they are about the same with roughly 15,000 owned firms under each category. Ten years ago, the city of Cleveland came up with the Sustainable Cleveland Municipal Action Plan to address the three E's of sustainability. In the plan, they wanted to lower energy costs, reduce the amount of waste created, and have better employee satisfaction while also helping them in terms of equity according to the page for the city. More recent data from 2019 from Johnston states that Cleveland for 10 years is going to spend $1 million annually to help restore the tree canopy. In the same article, it also states that they are thinking of a circular economy, which is about recycling and reusing. They also want to create transportation equity, which would help the environment as well. Their way they are trying to do this is by having bicycles and scooters for people, so there's a variety. Finding the same metric that Mexico City had to rate itself was difficult in the United States. There is a sustainability tool for assessing and rating communities, otherwise known as the STAR system. In it, it states that Cleveland is a community that is leading the way, the reasons being that they are reusing properties, otherwise known as brownfield land development, as we learned in class. Cleveland has also created a climate action plan, which falls under the environment. In economy, they are leading the way because they have a local and sustainable purchasing ordinance, which means that if a company uses local products or are considered a sustainable business, they have a preference, and there are also incentives for people that buy from the regional food growers. So how being globalized has helped both cities. Cleveland has become globalized because they are in the research and academic field. This has had an impact on their economy because this is one of the main ways that they are in the marketplace in the United States. This is also how they plan to retain citizens, as stated that they are trying to make college a reality for everyone who has lived there and been in the school system since the beginning of their high school year. This also helps with equity. The more educated people they have in the city, the more they could reach to be globalized and have a spotlight on them, which would help their economy. Also, since Mexico is in the North American Trade Free Agreement, NAFTA, it brought jobs on their side of the border but near the United States. They can help with sustainability by continuing to follow their guidelines, such as using biodegradable packaging. So globalization has helped their economy by creating jobs. It can help the environment by using guidelines that they have or by creating new ones. And it will help with equity by having more people employed, which will give people a better chance at earning money. With globalization, Mexico is also seeing how technological the world is getting, so if they want to keep up with the world, they are going to have to have more people educated. This means improving the school system and having more of their children go into higher level learning. This would then raise the standard of living, especially since they are not in a hard labor job that could be taken away by technology and from another country if they don't get ahead. So the similarities and differences. There are definitely things that each city and country can learn from each other. Equity seems to be the best in Cleveland, Ohio. I think one reason for this is because in the United States, children are obligated to go to school. If Mexico implemented a rule like this so that students would not be able to drop out, it would level the playing field a bit. Another idea that Mexico could borrow from Cleveland is by starting an initiative to have everybody be able to go to college. Another difference between the two is that Mexico City has created laws to help environmentally, such as banning plastic bags in the grocery stores and using the biodegradable materials in the packaging. In the United States, there's a lot of useless packaging, such as little candies that are individually wrapped in plastic as well as many other single-use products. Mexico is also promoting public transportation in a unique way by closing off traffic in the mornings on Sundays to promote bicycling and skating. A way in which they are similar is that they are both working to be greener. Cleveland is wanting a more circular economy so as not to waste much and has shown that they care about the environment by pledging $1 million each year for the tree canopy. In addition, Mexico is high-ranking environmental governance so they are more capable in carrying out orders that will make the economy more sustainable. So the lessons learned from each city, banning the use of plastic bags among other single-use items would be beneficial, promoting public transportation, 
making college affordable for everyone, funding for businesses, restoring wildlife, and creating a plan with realistic goals for each year to work towards being sustainable.